everyone. So um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm a Build Peace Virgin, so it's the first time being here. And I'm really happy to be part of this really awesome conference, very interactive, very creative. And we saw a lot of really cool presentations so far and also presenters. And um, I'm not as good in presenting since I'm a German-speaking person. I have this German strange accent. I always get very nervous and also uh, very excited. So at one point in time, I will start, instead of talking, I will be rapping. So please, slow me down, give me a sign, something like this. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Siegen, so even Germans don't know where Siegen is. You will remember it because we, won a comp we are second in a competition. In a second, I will show you the, this competition. You will then remember Siegen for the rest of your life. So um, my idea was to first talk about our computer clubs in Germany, which we established in 2004. And it's a really successful project, and everybody loves success stories. And I was like, nah, everybody wants to hear how we failed, or how we struggled, and how we overcome the struggles. So I'm talking about some other things which are related to the computer clubs, because I'm talking about computer clubs in uh, Palestine. So um, I am a PhD student. This is like how I look when I'm fieldwork in Morocco. I'm always wearing something on my head, so it's a cap, it's a scarf, whatever it is. I'm always very bearded, that's why they call me Al-Bukher. It means in Berber, uh, the bearded guy. And that's why you will remember Siegen, because there was this competition from Weiss, which are the ugliest universities in Germany. <laughs> and we are the second place, and it says the main building looks like as someone has vomited a, a glass of blue curacao on the back of a fridge. And it looks like this, so this is like a real picture from Siegen. Um, yeah. So um, what kind of projects do I work? So the first project I want to talk about is uh, the computer clubs we have in Germany. We established them at primary schools in 2004. And this is still the place where parents bring their children to and kind of interact with them. And we established this cool place with a lot of technology, e-textiles, 3D printers, um, computers, whatever. You name it, we got it. Um, we bring a lot of different children and they do cool projects about personally meaningful artifacts, like stories about their home, their favorite places in the neighborhood, and then they invite also their parents. And the idea is to bring all of them together and work on projects together. And then they kind of exchange ideas and they get to know each other. And I wouldn't say this is integration, but this is like getting friends and meet new people who are not like, who don't have your background. The second project is I'm working also at the line alert system in Botswana. We're trying to build um, a system which warns people if a line approaches their village, so they can have some activities like making a fire so the, the lions won't kill the cattle and the people won't kill the lions because they killed like half of the population 10 years ago and now they're kind of recovering and we try to prevent them from killing the cattle. I'm also working with people living with dementia. We did some extra games with them. Uh, not related to this, it's also boring. Um, my PhD is about how activists use social media in different contexts, like Palestinian activists, uh, Syrian activists, Tunisian activists, and uh, I try to compare all of them. This is like my PhD, but I do so many different other things, I don't have time to write my PhD. Um, the projects I want to talk about, the last project I want to talk about is the one about computer clubs and refugee camps in Palestine. So, in 2012, we got money from the foreign ministry, and they told us to kind of establish one of these computer club ideas, these computer clubs in the refugee camp. And what we did, we did two. And two different um, refugee camps. And we tried to compare them. And as usual, as researchers, we have this really naive idea that we can change the world. And the idea was that the local population who is not inside the refugee camp and who can't see refugees as second class citizens would come together with refugees in the computer club in a refugee camp. This was like, like our naive idea, which works in Germany at the primary schools. But um, we will see how this worked out. So as researchers, we have also like this really straightforward plan and ideas. So we use a participatory action research approach. So we are part of the intervention and not just observing and working with people. We're just really inside of the refugee camps, try to understand what's happening there. So we got these different phases, like understanding the context, creating our intervention, and also evaluate what's happening. And besides this, we also see how people 
make use of our computer club when we are not around. And uh, I'm not aware if you know how uh, refugees, refugee camps look like in Palestine. I will just give you a brief, intro uh, brief introduction. So after 1948, um, the establishment of Israel, or Nakba, how the Palestinians call it, the disaster, 700 people have to leave their homes and moved to Syria, to Lebanon, to Jordan, but also the West Bank, to nowadays Palestine. And the UNRWA was founded to take care of these people. And UNRWA is a UN organization. They leased a lot of land for these people where they should live in tents. And it was just like for a short period of time, but the, at the end now, these refugee camps exist for 70 years. And these are really crowded places. They're usually like one square kilometer, and the people are not allowed to expand. So they have to stay in this area. And now, 70 years ago, we were talking about 1,000 people. Now we have like 9 to 15,000 people in the same area. And you can imagine, it's not a very good place to live. But still, the, the Palestinian Authority, they need the refugees as a, like a political sign for the right to return at one point in time. That's why they have to keep the refugees as refugees. Um, so our, our intervention looked like this. So we had this really nice place, at one of the uh, youth centers, and we had raspberry pies with a lot of uh, displays. We got a, even a 3D printer inside of Palestine, which was really a big struggle, because we were uh, at Tel Aviv airport, and security was there like, yeah, can you print weapons with this? And we had to like four hours to explain, no, you can't, um, and you can't do it. Not with our printer. Um, and to also we did some other things with them, like uh, circuit stuff, which you can see on this picture. So we're working with a local university who gave us a lot of student volunteers who went with us inside of the refugee camp and did some really cool projects. So one of my favorite one was an upcycling project where the children built um, a couch using plastic bottles. And then they filled the plastic bottles with water. And I was like, why are you doing this? And they were like, yeah, we will never see the ocean. So this is like kind of their way to talk about what they can and cannot do. Um, and our idea was to bring also um, adults inside this computer club from outside the refugee camp and inside the refugee camp. And what should I say? We totally failed. Never happened. Until today, no one from outside the refugee camp even once enters the refugee camp besides our students. So what everybody told us, like, you need the right partners. And I think we got them. But what we didn't do was that we didn't give them like full ownership or even a little bit of ownership. We worked with all the stakeholders at the beginning to understand what's happening there. But then we thought, yeah, we are white men. We know what we should do here. And no, this doesn't work. So what we are doing right now, we are reflecting what happened and try to kind of give them a vision together with us that we have an idea which is based also on their ideas and to collaborate and cooperate. And what we could do, or what we could achieve, and I'm really proud of it, that we got a lot of students who never were in a refugee camp before being the first time in a refugee camp. And they saw the daily struggle and the daily challenges of refugee kids and refugees inside the camp. And it was the first time ever being in this place. And on the other side, we got children who got in touch for the first time in their life with outsiders of the refugee camp. Because they have their own schools inside the refugee camp, this is also divided by gender. And this was also like one of the first issues we had. We got two um, sessions of computer club, one for girls, one for boys. But because they liked being in the computer club, they kind of mixed up. And at the end, you can see we got boys, we got girls. They don't care, they are kids. And we were talking, I think, yesterday about transgenerational trauma. And this is something you can also see here. So the grandparents who experienced the Nakba, the disaster in 1948, they they tell their children about it, and they also tell their children about it. So these kids see Jewish people as the enemy. And by providing them new perspectives on life, on opportunities in life, I think we, we, we can't change, but we can kind of give them some new opportunity. And as one of our students told us, they have great potential, but they have to be less controlled. And this is what we try to have to save space in the computer club, and this works until today, and this is what I'm really proud of. And uh, it was always a nice picture, so here's a nice picture. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>